Bob Langes, Madeline Communications, and today I'd like to talk about the Cisco 7940 and 7960 series phones and their use with asterisk. There's a few reasons why you may want to use this phone. First, it's just a nice phone. It looks pretty good. Uh, it has nice line appearance buttons that are dedicated. Uh, in our display here, we're able to run XML applications. You can do something simple like just having a directory of your company online, or if you have any kind of applications that you want to run that are more complicated, you're able to do those as well. It's pretty neat. Applications are accessed through a dedicated button here. It has a dedicated button for voicemail. It has a nice uh, dedicated headset button, as well as a speaker phone and mute buttons. Audio quality is great, speaker phone quality is great, and it just looks good sitting on the desk, so it's something you may want to consider. So now, what we're going to go through is the configuration of this phone in both the Elastics asterisk environment, and then also there's some files that you may need to look at, or that you definitely have to look at, to configure the phone to work with asterisk. As far as configuring the telephone to do its job, there's a couple things that you need to change. First and foremost, you want to be able to log into the phone. And on my standard configured SIP phone here, uh, there's a selection here for unlock config. And the standard password is Cisco. So you just go ahead and you enter that in here. And you'll find a lot of this online too as you hunt around and look for the technique on how to do this. All right, you do that, you accept that config. And then basically what you want to do is you want to go through here, you want to go to network configuration. You want to, um, well, we, I have the phone set up to get DHCP from my network, so I get a, a network address and a gateway and all that. That makes it kind of simple. But what I need to be able to do is set up this TFTP server, which uh, if you have the right uh, DHCP server, you're able to set that as option 150 or 66. However, I don't have that here at my office, so what I had to do is configure something called an alternate uh, TFTP. So I had to toggle that to yes, and then I had to go back up here and I had to uh, just enter it. Um, I had to just enter it in manually and it grabbed my configuration file. It's uh, required because when the phone first boots up, it looks for its network and it looks for a TFTP connection and certain files, which I'll go over with you and uh, it finds those files and based on what it sees it's going to upload or uh, upgrade its software and then it's going to grab its configuration file uh, that's specific to the phone and also there's a general configuration file that tells all the Cisco phones uh, where to go to find some of the information so it's an important thing to configure and uh, outside of flashing the phone to SIP and configuring this parameter that's really all I had to do on the Cisco phone side to make it work with asterisk Okay, let's have a look inside Elastics how you go ahead and set up this Cisco phone. Uh, it'll be very similar in free PBX as well. I have an extension set up here, 210, that works with my Cisco phone today. I've done all the things you're going to give it, like a, a normal extension, a display name. A uh, couple things uh, that I had to find that were different from the defaults. Uh, under Qualify, I had to select No, and under NAT, I had to select Never. Uh, to get the phone to work, but uh, when I did those, it worked fine on my local network, and uh, that's all I had to do. Let's move on to the next. Okay, so now to work on the configuration files on the Asterisk server. So there's a couple things that you're going to take a look at. Uh, first is going to be in the TFTP boot file folder. There's a bunch of different files that you need to be concerned with, and the files that need to be in place here are the SIP default, the SIP file with your MAC address or your telephone, ring list, uh, some ring tones for your phone. Uh, if you're going to flash your uh, Cisco phone to a new version, you need the version of the bin file here and the SBIN file. And you also need this file here, os79xx.txt, which directs the Cisco phone as to which uh, version it should load. Okay, there's also a dial plan XML file that uh, should probably be there. Uh, so let's take a look. So to flash your phone, if you don't have the SIP version today, you simply put the version as it is listed in the file name uh, right here of what file you're going to use. And when you boot, your Cisco phone is going to be pointed to this TFTP server here, uh, like when you set up the phone manually, and it's going to grab the bin file and load it if it can. Now it worked fine for me for a 7940 and a 7960 phone, um, but it did not work for a 7941 or a 61, so evidently the procedure is different. The SIP default file 
has references to your server so everywhere you find this IP address or some IP address you want to reference it to your uh, server. These are the URLs that the phone is using to make some of its buttons active. So we have a services button on the phone and it's actually going out to our web server here and it's going to the Cisco directory and pulling up the services XML file and the same thing for the directory file so when you choose external directory it pulls this up and see our branding logo here uh, it's for the John Omiko company and it's uh, just a nice BMP file I put together for them. So once you define those things you're going to go to the phone specific file and you're going to define a label for the top of the phone and then you're going to define your line. So we got line name which I'm just calling it my extension and it's because I'm going to show it several times I thought it's nice to annotate it with a dash one and dash two and three. So you need the name, the password, and down here the authorization name and uh, that's it so as this file said I can configure up to four different line appearances on my phone if I have them available and I set it to what I configured in uh, Elastics and it works just fine. Now let's navigate to the web directory that uh, we're housing those files in so it's a stock directory that uh, Apache uses so my var www html directory and I had created a Cisco folder here and in the Cisco folder I housed a couple different things my johnamico.bmp file which is basically the logo that's on the phone I have directory.xml which I, I just basically took the examples that were there added a couple different things and I was able to make that come up I'm not an XML programmer but it was simple enough to follow and then the last thing that I worked with was the services and uh, basically all I did was just put a, uh, some text in there that it indicates that it found something so there's no error and that there's no services enabled but if you're an XML programmer have at it you can have some fun there uh, and that's all I did to configure this 7940 phone to work with the Astra system through Elastics. Thanks for spending the time with me today if you'd like more information check us out at www.supportdocs.net or www.medlinink.com and we'll help you with an Astro system or anything else that uh, you may need. Low voltage, uh, we do a lot of different projects for our customers that include cabling, security, fire alarm, CCTV, access control, and really any kind of custom application you may have around your facility, we can help you with that too. Thank you very much.